Hey guys, welcome back to Get a Garage. My name is Mike. Uh, today, I'm going to take a look at. I'm, I'm take a look at. I'm buying this Jeep. I'm pretty sure. Um, the deal is too good to pass up on it, and I um, need some of the parts. Just the parts alone that he has is worth it. It's also presumably rust free. I haven't seen any pictures. So we'll have to take a look at that and I will show you the current status of the Jeep that I'm driving right now. Um, we got a car dolly on the back and I plan on towing this back on a car dolly. So a little bit of a tricky situation, but a little bit more on that when we go to uh, put it on the trailer and whatnot. Jeep's supposed to come with a, uh, a bare block, an engine that's supposedly blown. I, I think one of the rods let go and put a hole in it. So we'll have to take a look and see what the status of that is at some point. And I will uh, show you a little bit about what's going on with the current Jeep and why I why I want to do what I want to do in the in the current plans, what we have in store for fixing this thing up and, and whatnot. So, all right, guys. Well, we bought it. It is uh, it's back there, along with a. Uh, bunch of parts if you can't even see around it probably um, I'll have to uh, pull over to gas station here in a little bit and uh, take a close look at it make sure that everything's strapped down good and uh, I'll show you I'll give you a little bit of an update and uh, walk around and stuff I am absolutely uh, stoked about this I can't wait to dig into it and see what's all there and what I need um, the main thing is I needed tires for my Jeep this one came with pretty much brand new tires it, it sold it for me and it made everything else totally worth it. So I'm like freaking really excited. I didn't start recording right away because I was like kind of nervous about towing. But I'll tell you what, this Jeep has been towing absolutely flawlessly. Um, when it's in overdrive, it doesn't like going up the hill so much. So I end up downshifting. <laughs> there we go, downshift. Gotta go. Um, so, the main thing I guess I want to mention is I'm towing a Jeep with another Jeep. It's probably not recommended. Um, mostly because the weight is just going to be a little bit over the 5,000 pounds that they say these can tow. So, you probably don't want to do that. I've upgraded mine a little bit, so I feel a little bit more comfortable. I've worked on it a lot. I know what these are capable of, so I'm pretty confident that it'll, it'll be able to tow just fine. It's doing pretty good right now, so I'm not worried about it now. I've, I've, I feel much better, and I'm just stoked to get this home and, and start digging into it. So um, the, the next trick is going to be getting it into my driveway. All the rust repair I would have had to do to this Jeep is now minimized by, by, by quite a bit. So, um, you know, hopefully... It's not too much work, and you know, you don't really know until you start digging into stuff, but it looks like it's all there, and you know, if not, I got this one as backup parts. So, we got this new Liberty full of parts, including a whole engine. It is a blown up engine, but it is an engine. I wanted to get a clip of this thing. Got the typical rust up here. However, up underneath her for a second. Super clean compared to mine. Well, you can see it already. It's, it's already done for. We're almost back. About a half an hour, but it might be dark out, so I wanted to show the rig. This one being towed by this one. See that right there? That is torque. This thing is working. I just went up a hill that was probably like a mile long and this thing just barely dipped below 60 and it wasn't even pushing 2,000 RPMs. It just chugged up it like a tank. This thing is doing pretty good. I'm almost home and then we get to figure out how to get it in the driveway. 
he'll, he'll, he'll see what I mean. All right, so we're home, we made it. Jeep, Jeep. But as you can see, I'm in the road right now. That, we can see right underneath the Passat from here. That is another diesel, by the way. Maybe we'll do a video on that sometime. Um, but we are um, basically at a 17 degree angle here. I gotta get this thing up, so. Do a little figuring out and see what we can come up with. All right, I'm sorry about the noise. If we have any noise, I'm right next to a highway. So, there's cars everywhere. But, I think I might have figured out a way to get this up here. So, I should be able to get it off and at least roll it into the bottom of my driveway down there. I have uh, a snatch block and a chain running all the way up here to the garage where I happen to have this car already sitting here. And this car is also gonna be a project car on the channel. So um, stay tuned for some stuff on that if you're interested. All right, so it's a new day. The dolly, I had to return the dolly last night and it got dark out by the time I got back. So I wasn't able to film any more last night. So I just decided to leave it as it was. The Jeep was up on the road right there. I just kind of coasted it down and just got it into the base of the driveway right there. So the plan now is to move the cars around a little bit and use the winch to winch the Jeep back up the rest of the driveway. Jeep number one, we got a winch on there going up, a snatch block, I had to do this a little convoluted with a chain going to the back of the BMW and then snatch blocks going back down to the other Jeep. I'm just going to set this on time lapse and I guess you guys are going to just see what happens. This should be fun. My garage has got a really smooth floor. It actually slid my BMW from about here all the way to back there. I'm able to move it up a little bit. So I'm going to have to readjust everything here so that way we can keep pulling it up. And then also I want to try and get it up as high as I can because there is a blown up engine in the back of it. So we got to try and see if we can get that out at some point too. So. All right, so here is the engine. We got it jammed in the back of the Jeep. Um, cannot see the damage from this side. The damage is on the other side of the engine, and I can't see that from here, so we won't know until how bad it is until we really get it out. So I'm kind of curious to see the hole in the block. I did see some of the pieces of the cast iron block floating around. So uh, I'm gonna see if we can get this pulled out. I'm a little nervous because we are on a, right on the incline of my driveway. I mean, I'm a good 10 feet above the road and the road is right there. So I'm a little nervous. Um, Cause I, first of all, I have to get past this door too. Um, so I guess we'll see if I can get this thing out of here. All right, so we got it out. Started dripping oil out of the hole, I'm presuming. Uh, but it's out. I got it sitting down as low as possible right now, but the leaking oil destroyed this really nice back. It was like in really good condition, but the oil leaked through the holes and got that all nasty. So I'll have to try and see if I can clean that. It dripped out and it dripped all the way out this way too. So um, apparently he uh, pulled the engine without draining the oil. So that's always fun. Here is the aftermath. We got it in. Now I gotta get it on the engine stand so we can figure out what's wrong with it. There you go. There's your hole. Boom. 190,000 miles. She poked a hole. Okay, so, Jeep's up the driveway, engine's in the shop. We got a couple of things to talk about. So first of all, I towed the Jeep on a dolly. Probably not recommended unless you know what you're doing. Do not just put it in neutral. You'll toast the transmission. 
there was a while ago, there was somebody that towed their Jeep with the transfer case in four low and revved it to, I think it was 14,000 RPMs and grenaded the engine while it was off. So it blew it up pretty good. It was not a diesel, but still, even a gasoline engine can't rev that high. Um, let's go take a look at the Jeep real quick. I was just gonna show you a couple of things that I'll have to do on it and see what we got going on. We got the uh, radiator stack up there with um, the intercooler radiator, I believe the uh, AC condensers on there as well. Grill with lights. Came with brand new tires on it, so that was one of the main reasons we bought it. For the price that I paid for this, it basically, I paid for the tires, the rest of everything else was free. We do have a little bit of rust right here. And I think a lot of that's just from it rubbing on the bottom of the door. Bottom of the door looks pretty clean. We got a little bit of rust right here, but I do have my Jeep still. So the plan is to come up with good parts from both of these and put them together on one Jeep. Obviously the bumpers are pretty faded on this one. The main uh, issue we're gonna have to deal with as far as any rust goes is gonna be right up here around the tail light. So this is gonna be a spot that we work on. Um, I'll show you how to do a proper repair up there so you don't ever have the issue again. Apparently what happens is the seal on the uh, around here goes bad and water gets in and it's just a bad day for everybody. So it's, uh, that's kind of the plan. Um, let's go back inside and we'll uh, Look at the uh, look at the engine. See what we got on there. This has got a new turbo from Sasquatch Parts on it. You can tell this is in pretty new shape. There's zero play on the shaft, so it's in really really good shape. I'm hoping that the head on this engine is in good shape. I haven't opened it up. We will be getting to that in the next video. So stay tuned for uh, what lies in and what's salvageable from this. This block right here came with the Jeep and it has got no liners. So that is something that we will have to acquire. Um, it also has a bad crank. So I don't know if you can see that down there. This piston crank uh, looks like it spun the bearing. I'm assuming it's bad. It, it could just be uh, old bearing that's stuck on there still that, that, that was bad that needs to come off. We'll have to dig into it more. It, if I had a guess, I'd say it's bad. It looks bad to me. I can see the hole for the lubrication, so uh, shouldn't be able to see that. I doubt that's salvageable. On the plus side, we'll have to see if maybe the crank from that is salvageable. A lot of this is unknowns right now, so we're gonna have to really dig into this and kind of come up with a good plan on what we can save and what we can't save and uh, what we're gonna have left over. It would be great to end up with two Jeeps at the end of all this that both run and drive. Um, but really what I wanted was something to swap my engine into that didn't have any rust because mine was getting rusty and I was afraid that's really going to be the, the downfall of it. So we also have a box of parts here. This is a new OEM torque converter with pretty low miles on it from my understanding. We've got the air box, um, Samco hoses, definitely good stuff. Um, so it's got some upgrades. Apparently the guy that had this, that I bought it from, had seen some of our videos, so shout out to that guy for giving me a killer deal. So the next video, we're gonna be tearing down this block, this engine, take the head off, see if the engine is still, uh, the head is still good, see what we can save from it. Hopefully a lot of it's good. I'm really hoping the only thing that we can't save is the block itself, because if that's the case, then we have a block here, put it all together and we're good to go. All we would need is the, the liners, which, uh, Sasquatch sells those if you guys are needing them. Uh, it's a piston and a cylinder liner kit that are matched together. They may be uh, on board for this, we'll have to see. But uh, even if not, shout out to Sasquatch for helping us out every time we have anything we have to do with this car, uh, with this Jeep. It's definitely been a, a huge help and to know that all our parts are just available like that, super cool. So. 
stay tuned for the teardown and we'll see you guys next time bonus footage if you guys are interested i'm in a new shop in case you had noticed it's got white walls which makes the lighting a lot nicer in here just a little bit of a walk around We've got a compressor bmw that we need to work on shelving and storage mini lathe toolbox and tool bench just got this all set up trying to be saving on space here so stuff is still a little cramped i don't have the welder set up anywhere yet we're uh working on trying to i'm really trying to be efficient with the space that i have here because it's not much i can really only fit one car in here at a time as it is so also stay tuned if you're interested for the bmw we have some clips of me trying to get this thing running and it runs but it runs pretty badly so um it doesn't even make it up the driveway under its own power so stay tuned for that and we'll see you guys on the next one